This is a great opportunity for a, a bunch of, I'll say, younger representatives that are just entering. We've, we've seen a couple of budgets now, and we're looking at the process and saying, you know what, I think we need some reform here. You know, we, we need to be investing in our future, in our putting more money in our rainy day fund, as well as bringing some of these shadow budgets uh, online. So I would encourage folks, um, I'm happy to be a part of this package and be, be out here championing and helping uh, anything I can do. Um, but I would encourage folks to, to watch the, the press conference here today. Um, we're going to post that on our Facebook page. We'd love folks to be able to watch that and really hear what we're trying to do to reform and rethink spending here in the state of Pennsylvania. Good morning. Uh, recently, the Budget Office released the 2019 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, or the CAFR, which describes in detail the financial position of the Commonwealth. It's one of the most important documents as it provides critical financial data to the general public and bond rating agencies. It also provides an end-of-the-year report on how well the state's finances were managed based on the laws which govern the financial management of the Commonwealth, the adopted budget, and decisions the executive branch have made during the fiscal year. Currently, the Commonwealth's net position is negative $5.6 billion, which is needless to say, not good. But the good news is that the Commonwealth's net financial position has improved by over $3 billion from 2018. This is a positive change, and we should be, see additional improvement with over $300 million being deposited into the Rainy Day Fund. I want to take a moment and thank our House leadership team, particularly House Majority Appropriations Chairman Stan Saylor for leading the charge for such a large deposit into the Rainy Day Fund. This provides greater financial stability and reduced spending, which all improve our finances. While there is good news, the Commonwealth is still facing deficit spending or spending more than what revenues provide, creating massive financial pressure. Today, we're here to announce a financial reform package of legislation to improve the financial governance of the Commonwealth. I'd like to first introduce Dr. Eileen Norcross, the Vice President of Policy Research and a Senior Research Fellow at the Mercatus Center at George Mason University. Her research focuses on questions of public finance and how economic institutions support or hamper economic resiliency in civil society. Dr. Norcross. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me today. In both strong economic times and during downturns, it is vital that states operate <clears throat> under fiscal and budget rules that promote transparency, discipline, and fiscal sustainability. One lesson from the last recession is that when states rely on gimmicks or accounting illusions to give the appearance of budgetary balance, eventually such one-shot tactics can blow a hole in state budgets and even lead to structural deficits, unfunded liabilities, and rising debts. Pennsylvania has made a lot of progress in the last few years by addressing some of its fiscal challenges head on, including the passage of significant pension reform and renewed commitment to rebuilding the state's rainy day fund. These policies were preceded by a careful analysis of the state's short run position and long term obligations, which shows that Pennsylvania lawmakers are committed to strengthening the state's fiscal health. Another area for improvement is for the state to bolster the rules around budgeting with a view towards greater transparency and accountability for spending. Budgeting requires understanding policy priorities, spending trade-offs, and long-term risks, and how to manage economic and demographic pressures that affect the state's budget. That's only possible when lawmakers have a full and accurate picture of the state's budget and finances and are given the opportunity to deliberate and discuss how the state's revenues are spent. <clears throat> In 2006, Pennsylvania's operating budget was $56 billion. Today, that number is $84 billion. This jump in spending is driven by the growth of other funds, in which general funds are shifted into less visible special funds and earmarks. According to the state's independent fiscal office, in fiscal 2018, the state's 43 special funds totaled $9.5 billion. The proliferation of special funds are not unique to Pennsylvania, but their growth may be a sign of weak spending discipline. The effect is to diminish budget transparency and to give both policymakers and the public a false sense of the true amount of spending, public policy priorities, and the taxes necessary to support those programs. In previous research, I have labeled the habitual shifting of funds as a form of fiscal evasion, which I define as an accounting tactic, budgeting rule, or intergovernmental arrangement that conceals the full cost of public spending. 
The practice of off-budget accounting or the creation of special funds can be problematic, effectively creating a shadow budget that isn't subject to the same legislative oversight, debate, or rules that apply to the general fund. The outcome is a two-track general fund budget in which the general fund appears to be flat or declining while the overall budget grows. In addition to reducing overall budget transparency and bypassing the process, special funds may lead to the hoarding of general revenues. Experts have identified the proliferation of special funds as an obstacle to fiscal discipline or sp and spending accountability in several states, including Illinois, California, and Ohio. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan has called the practice a reckless approach for determining funding priorities. Pennsylvania has the opportunity once more to lead in enforcing good budgeting practice and fiscal practice by limiting the use of special funds and bringing general fund revenue back into clear view for both policymakers and the public. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen, for your critical research into proving public finance. Well, on November 1st, Treasurer Joe Torcell announced a $1.5 billion line of credit from the short-term investment pool, or STIP, to manage negative cash flow in the general fund. At the time of the announcement, the Wolf administration had already drawn down $400 million to ensure we can pay the bills. If all the $1.5 billion is utilized at a 1.52% increase rate for six months, the taxpayers will pay an additional $11.4 million. Often we speak of going after waste fraud and abuse of taxpayer money, and there is no clear example of wasting taxpayer money than paying $11.4 million to borrow money from ourselves. By the way, remember, all this is happening even though the Commonwealth is collecting record revenues due to the Trump economy. The STIP, which is funding the loan, is Commonwealth money. We are borrowing from ourselves while increasing cost to taxpayers, which is absurd. House Bill 1988 will transfer 17 special funds hidden away in the shadow budget back into the general fund to provide short-term financial relief to the general fund. End the short-term borrowing and eliminate the added cost to taxpayers. The legislation specifically protects expenditures of what the special funds currently fund, but will allow the treasurer to add the available cash into the general fund to mitigate the need to borrow. A bonus is the residents of Commonwealth will have a better knowledge of how much money is actually being spent instead of hidden from them in secret accounts. This is a simple and common sense solution to dire financial issue. And those 17 accounts total $2.08 billion, of which $216.7 million is identified as recurring revenue. Um, with that, I'd like to invite Representative Don Kiefer to discuss House Bill 1991. Good morning, and thank you all for coming here today. I started my first uh, year in the General Assembly with a $1.5 billion deficit. So we had a budget gap of $1.5 billion. But we were sitting on $12 billion in end fund balances in our special funds, which prompted me to dig in. Spe um, Sorry, fiscal evasion, that's a perfect terminology. That's what these special funds are. Uh, we have almost 200 special funds, some more active, active than others, and there's little accountability or oversight by the General Assembly. And this has been a growing trend, probably two or three bills every session um, in just our house alone has a new special fund that they're promoting or that they are trying to get passed. We need to get this under control. House Bill 1991 would disallow any additional special funds to be established, which would provide greater transparency. And that's what we're lacking. When we talk about why our economy isn't growing at the pace of other states and why we're not succeeding more than we should, it's the lack of predictability. Pennsylvania's lack of predictability, whether it be regulations, whether it be taxes, whether it be fees, is discouraging businesses to locate here. And when businesses don't locate here, we, don't, we lose our young workforce, and, this, and it contributes to brain drain. We need to get that back under control. And if we don't get our budget under control, we will never have any kind of predictability. And the way we have our budget layered with all of these different shenanigans of how to shift money around from one fund to another or from the general fund to offline spending is a false sense of, of our financial picture. Um, and we have 
completely evaded any kind of accountability that our taxpayers deserve. We need to get our fiscal house in order. We have many bills that are just trying to pick away at this one step at a time, but this would stop the practice of shifting these funds offline and creating this false narrative that we are financially more secure than we are. So thank you all for coming here today, and I thank uh, my colleague Seth Grove for really leading the charge on this. Thank you, Representative Keeper, for your continued financial leadership. Next, I'd like to welcome Andrew Lewis to discuss House Bill 1990. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's very exciting to be here with, with colleagues, both on the Finance Committee and across uh, the House of Representatives, to really tackle this problem and introduce a series of financial reforms. Um, I'm pleased uh, and grateful for the leadership of Representative Grove, who's really spearheaded uh, this project and has taken leadership on the project. So my, my bill is, is, is a very important part of this package, because what it does is it authorizes a state council on finances, which consists of 12 members from really across state government, including the Secretary Secretary of Revenue, Budget Secretary, Auditor General, State Treasurer, uh, member, and, and a, a number of, of folks, including members from all four caucuses, Democrats and Republicans, to come together and take a strategic look at the financial condition of the state as we, as we enter and go through the budgeting process year to year. Budgeting, and, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again every day that I'm here, uh, tax revenue does not belong to the legislature. It belongs to the people who sent us here. We were elected in, in no small part to be responsible responsible, transparent, and accountable stewards of those funds. And so what this does is instead of budgeting through a knee-jerk, last-minute political wrangling process, it enables us to take a much more strategic view of state finances through a collaborative effort with this uh, Council on Finance. And so I'm very excited about this, this proposal. Uh, the Council would also assess and review financial information of the Commonwealth, including revenue proje projections, pension, OPEB health, and cost drivers in the budget, among other information. So we're taking a holistic view of all issues uh, affecting finance throughout the Commonwealth and, and making strategic recommendations recommendations to the legislature on budgeting. Very excited about the bill and grateful for the work of my colleagues on the other uh, bills throughout this package. And we await your questions after other remarks. Thank you. Who would have thought collaborative budgeting? How innovative. Um, thank you, Representative Lewis, for your leadership to bring financial sanity to Harrisburg. Uh, next, next, I'd like to welcome Representative Tim, Tim O'Neill to discuss House Bill 1989. And we should have had maybe some 90s music playing here with all these bills in the 1990s era. <laughs> Thank you, Seth. Uh, it, it's a pleasure to be a part of this important financial reform package. Uh, in 2007, there, there was a study that compared uh, the, the budget surpluses or deficits across the nation in Pennsylvania, or excuse me, not 2007, 2017. Uh, in Pennsylvania w was one of eight states at the time operating at a budget deficit. You know, we, we heard from some of the colleagues uh, about the financial stability of the Commonwealth, and we continue to be ranked at the lower end of all 50 states when it comes to financial stability. Uh, one of the reasons is that despite the, 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 the deposit into the rainy day fund uh, of over $300 million. The, the reality is with the current budget in the rainy day fund, the Commonwealth can only operate for three and a half days. We, we are on the verge of financial peril and this is in one of the best economies that any of us have seen in our lifetime. So independent analysis actually estimates that the amount in the rainy day fund is only 9% of what's necessary to, to handle a severe recession and only 13% necessary to handle a mild recession. And in order to strengthen the Commonwealth's rainy day fund and our financial stability, my bill, House Bill 1989, is a, an, a, a constitutional amendment that would require the state treasurer to transfer all surplus funds directly into the rainy day fund. This requirement would continue until the rainy day fund is equal to 20% of all revenues collected uh, throughout the fiscal year of the Commonwealth. And require, by requiring the surplus funds to be transferred into the rainy day fund, the state can quickly bolster its financial uh, stability, its financial reserves to, to handle a future economic downturn. 
So money in the rainy day funds, uh, Representative Growth talked about earlier about how uh, we, we consistently take, take loans off of our special funds and pay the interest. The money in the rainy day fund, it would be intended to do a similar thing in the event that it's needed. Uh, the state treasurer would have the authority to take a loan as long as it's paid back at the same fiscal year. In uh, any other use of the rainy day fund would be required, uh, would require a two thirds vote of the General Assembly. So I think it's important that in these years of excess revenue, last year I believe the, the, excess, the surplus revenue was over a billion dollars. I think the pro projections for this year are similar. Uh, it's important that we stop the practice of immediately appropriating that money into the next fiscal cycle and we begin to save for our future. Thank you. Thank you, Representative O'Neill, for your steadfast leadership to improve the Commonwealth finances. I'd like to thank our, our House Majority Whip, Kerry Bettinghoff, for coming. Um, um, Representative Torin Ecker, Representative Clint Allett, Representative uh, Valerie Gatos, and Representative Barb Lyme, and Representative Chris Dush for joining us as well. Uh, in closing, I'd like to thank my colleagues here today for their support, leadership, and willingness to provide the financial leadership Pennsylvanians expect from their public servants. This financial reform package of legislation will reduce the state borrowing, improve our credit rating, and strengthen the Commonwealth's rainy day fund. These four common sense reforms are smart and innovative solutions House Republicans have been championing. At this time, I'll enter any questions. I was just wondering, how do you define um, surplus? Is this after the legislature gets done spending all the new, you know, with the new spending that every budget seems to bring, or is it, like, when, when does the surplus, when does that define? Is um, normal process, so um, it's at the end of the fiscal year. So if, if there's a surplus at the end of this coming fiscal year, that amount of money will be transferred into the rainy day fund. So if, if there's no surplus at the end of the fiscal year um, or there's a negative, um, there won't be a transfer. So it's at the end of, of, of the fiscal year that shows a surplus, um, that money's going to be automatically transferred over. Correct. Yep. Yep. Good question. Any other questions? Any members? Carrie? All right. Thank you all for coming. Uh, and, and again, um, documents will be, uh, I think, press packets are, are available as well as uh, documents on our websites. Thank you all so much.